welcome back. This is part two. We still don't have a name. What do you mean? Am I oh, we have to Steve and Janie. We we oh we need a name. We need like if I'm gonna start posting these on YouTube consistently each uh, week. Do you guys right. want to see us consistently each week? They yeah, totally do. How about why are you the way that you are? That's a good one. Is that too long? Might be. I like it. Why are you the way that you are? Podcast. Beat like sharing. An old married couple. Yep. Um, old. So in the first one, we did a whole of how we met, when we met, and all of that. Yep. We did that. <laughs> that kind of stuff. And it was supposed to be a QA, and a but it got too long. Like Dave called, it was going to be too long. I said that because I film podcasts on my own channel. Used Go ahead. Be, shameless plug. Used to be podcast. At YouTube, used at used to be podcast, right? Is that what it is? Yeah. At used to be podcast. Instagram and TikTok. Same thing all around. And I am Janie Apolita. <laughs> no affiliation with used to be. Just the owner of the podcast. I'm the owner? Yeah. How? What do you mean, how? What do you mean I'm the owner? The owner of the used to be's? Yeah. No, I'm not. It's all fall of all falls under the the one S corp, dear. Oh, it does. It does now. Oh, so I own you <laughs> and Kurt. Does normally, he, he you own me. Normally, yes. So now you own Kurt, and he knows. He knows. Huh. Okay. Well, I'm feeling powerful. So let's. I have all the Instagram Q and A questions right on here. All right. So let's pick one first. Like I said, there was a lot of how we met and all that. That's on the first one. I love this one. Is Dave going to be a cooking influencer soon? I would love to do that. I know. When someone wrote that, I was like, it's like you know him. That sounds great. You so I like to start. cook and bake. What? You should start posting though. I should. Me. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do that on used to be podcast pages and just see. You should have posted this morning he made oh, what did you make? Oh, why did I mean, you tell me my hair was like that? I mean, so the Hawaiian rolls. I made mm -hmm. French toast with the Hawaiian rolls, but I made like a custard for the French toast. So heavy cream, eggs. Just a little whip it together. Yeah. It took me like eight minutes. A little cinnamon sugar. Kids loved it. They ate it right up. Yeah. What is your favorite thing to eat when you go out to dinner with Dave? It used to be sushi, but we did yeah, it so uh, much that I like can't even look at sushi anymore. I don't know how people eat it as much as they do because we ate it for consistently for like five years maybe like at least once a week yeah at yeah. least once a week and now i can't even look at it what have we been getting i feel like lately we've been liking barbecue like i love oh, a good yeah. pulled pork or pulled chicken sandwich you certainly do <laughs> i don't know what else like i'm when was the last time we went we don't we don't order italian food out because i can cook it better we don't but what's your go-to are you like steak usually when we go out to eat right uh, when we go out to, yeah, I try to do like some type of steak or if we're going out to like an Italian restaurant, I always do like the viola sabuco. And I'm a plain Jane and I get chicken, whatever the chicken dish is. Yeah, she's always, she always gets chicken. Or I used to like salmon, but I got sick of that too. Yeah. Well, I like, I like veal. I like steak. I was thinking about doing the carnivore diet. Hmm. I just Good eat steak. I don't know if I could do it though. Okay. Um, best tasting high protein options. What? That's not for us. <laughs> Let's see. Nothing to ask. I just love you guys. That's sweet. That was nice. I know. This was for me. Do I miss doing hair? But I feel like Dave could answer this. Do I? Miss not one second of it. I he miss my it. clients. I he misses her clients and her friends that she worked with sometimes. Yeah. But no, she does not miss doing hair. And most of my clients follow me on Instagram and message me all the time. So we like, and there are some that I text. So we keep in touch. Um, and like a lot of them live in this town. So I do see them, but that's the only thing I miss. I don't miss, I miss sometimes like being in the salon, but not enough to want to go back. And if you're new here, I quit my job. It's been a year now. It's been a year. She quit her job a little over a year ago to do this content creation full time. Yeah. And it has worked out. Yeah. It most certainly has worked out. Oh, my God. Wait, I don't know. This one's frisky. It's a spicy question. I like spicy. I, any you don't. I know. Any suggestions on a SEX toy looking to spice things up? And I don't know if I could answer this. I could answer. Do you want to answer it? 
Why? Like, who asked that kind of question? There's people. Oh, wait, it's definitely a guy. Oh, yeah. Tr yeah. Sorry. Oh, no, we're not going to answer. Yeah. That. Okay. How many times per week? Just so you know, if you if you are if you follow my wife on any social media outlet and you are a guy sending her creepy messages, we look at them together and we laugh and we we point, <laughs> we point at you and we're like, what kind of person would do that? And we just make fun of you and we judge you based off of your, your and my, actions. My Instagram is really like geared towards girls. Like it's, it's geared towards women. Yeah. It just happens to have me. Yeah. Um, how many, this is from a girl though. I know this person. How many times, or like, I know she messages me. Um, how many times per week is it normal for a married person with kids to have sex? So they ask not how many times we do it, but how many times do we, can? how many times do we each consider it's normal? What would you say is normal? I, I would say the most normal thing is three. Three times per week? Yeah. Well, that's what they say. That's what, all the therapists that I've seen. <laughs> I, Every therapist. They say three is is the right number. And and look, you could sit there and make a million different excuses, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, if you just change a little bit of your routine to where, like, instead of your daughter going to bed at 9.15, which she does every night. Are you, you talking go, to me or are you talking to this person? I'm talking to everybody, but geared towards you. Like, if you change a little bit of your routine... Because it's not as if my wife does it all by herself. I get done from work 3.30 in the afternoon. We could literally get the entire house ready for bed and have everyone kind of set up by 8 o'clock so that when 8.30 rolls around and it's the time that we can have together. And I'm not saying we have to have sex every night. It sounds great, but we're not. it's not going to happen. But, like, if we could set everything up and then put the baby to get and then we have that that time because i'm asleep by 9 30 i throw that cpap on at like 9 30 and i am done so so like to have that hour every night even just to recharge like it doesn't have to be always sexual like even just for we sometimes we just sit there and talk to each other that is nice i do like like we call it a recharge we're like or we call it like 10 minutes to connect yeah. and we'll just talk and we haven't been doing that lately because our daughter has because our daughter is regressing in her sleep progression. She has been in our bed. She's been going to bed at 11 p.m. Mm. Like she's been staying up like we start and like we try and put her in. But my problem is if she cries or whines, I won't make her lay in her room. I'm like, it's nope. OK. Nope. My wife is an enabler. OK, so that one, you know, let's that see. one backfired at you. <laughs> uh, oh, this person. Why are you so? Oh, I thought it was saying, why is Dave so mean? It said, why are you so mean to Dave? I agree with I'm you. I'm not mean. You're mean. When is da Wait, when is Dave going to do his podcast? It started. It started already. I have five episodes posted. We could probably, well, by the time this comes out, there'll probably be like eight episodes posted. But it's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcast. Uh, we are on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Um, let's see. Green, green, Jeez. This person, how much do you weigh? That's rude. Um, none of your business. There was another one. Okay. Why is Dave always so grumpy looking? Dun, dun, dun. I am grumpy looking. That's his face and it's his tone. That's my face. Yeah. Let's talk about Dave's tone. Let's not talk about my tone, Jane. A lot of people have issues with it, including your own mother. My mother and my wife. The two Ooh. most important women besides your daughter. Here's the have thing, an issue. Though. And you know what? Ava has an issue with your tone, too, because sometimes you tell her no in a mean tone and she just starts. I know. Crying. I just tell her no. And she thinks it's a mean tone. It's no. Just me telling her no, so because someone in this house has to say no. The three most important women in your life have an uh, issue with your tone. So do you ever look in the mirror and think maybe it's me? No, I don't. Because I've been this way for 37 years, almost 38. And for some reason, everyone around me doesn't realize it even though they met me with this same tone and my mother made me with this same tone and i brought my daughter into this world with this same tone so i have to change everything about me i don't think so okay this one this is a good one helpful tips for separation with kids Oof. it's hard there is no especially there's no fucking and excuse my language there is no fix for the pain that you will feel. None. Yeah. Especially in the beginning. And I'm guessing since you said separation with the kids, that means that you're 
separated, right? Like I'm guessing that means that you're just going through like the whole process. You may be getting a divorce. You may be splitting up the beginning. I even had, see when I met Dave, I was already separated from my son's father for a while. So we kind of were just like getting to that good part, but Dave was in the thick of it. So especially in the beginning, there's always one person's feeling that got hurt. I feel like there's, you're both on edge. You're both trying to, I don't know, you're both trying to do the best for the kids, but like you want your way. And then you don't, neither of you want to miss out on anything. Nope. And, but I think like what we've learned in no way are we experts, but I feel like we've been in a really great spot lately. Um, And what we learned is like the biggest, it's so cliche. You really have to put the kids first. And like a lot of things that you're arguing about or so dumb. And they don't, so dumb. and they don't, don't matter care. to the kids. They don't care. Like they, all the kids care about is if they see both of you guys and they come to a loving household. Yep. They don't care if they, like I don't know, they don't care if this weekend they're not going to see dad, but it's going to be next weekend. Or they don't like yeah. as long as they get to see both parents, and like yeah. I don't know, they're just like they don't care who pays for what. They don't no. like. It's just, it's, it's it really, it's just trivial shit that you fight over yeah. because you're trying to sit there and get the upper hand on the other person. And they don't care, like, if they're at grandma's house instead of dad's house or mom's house. Like, no. that was one thing when me and my ex split. Like, I'd be like, well, he's not even, like, if he's not going to be at your house, like, I should have him. But it's a, it's a thing, like, he has a family over there. Like, grandparents want to see that. Like, yeah. it's like the kids just want to feel loved. And that's the most, like, you kind of really have to bite your tongue and, it sucks because you're losing time. Either way you look at it, you're losing time with your kids. But as long as you can make the most of it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, look, it's separation's tough. Divorce is tough. Uh, the only thing that got me through it, because I'm, I'm, I'm a very hands-on dad. Like, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a dad to kind of just like, all right, like, I want to be at everything. I want to be involved in everything. I want to coach every sport. Even Peter, who's not my biological son, but he is my son 26 days a month. So guess what? He's my son. I want to be involved in everything for him. You know, he's, I, I, it's just how I feel. It's a, how I'll always feel. And it's one of those things where like, I want, I'm, I'm, I had a hard time taking a step back. So I started therapy. And I think what's really hard to, yeah, therapy, I cannot Therapy's say enough huge good things about therapy, huge. not only for yourself to kind of help because they help you see different ways of looking at the situation. Like they help you pull, they're an unbiased party that helps pull you out of your, if you find a good therapist and see different ways of how you could think or feel about the situation and also therapy for the kids. Yeah. Why are you oh, laughing? man. No, because you're the, a good therapist. One. I've, I've been through therapists. I found one therapist. Yeah. I have one therapist now who I've had for eight, eight years and she is like my, I, I treat her like my sister. Like we, we argue, we, but but she's the one that kind of pulled me out of my own way when I was going through the thick of it. And I've learned a lot from her to the point where I'm like able to deal with certain things now. Cause look, I'm in a high, I have a high stress job and then going through a divorce doing that. It's like, you know, sometimes you just need a little bit of help Yeah. and mental health to me is huge. Well, and the only reason why, like, I didn't mean to dig at therapists. No, no. Like that. The only reason why I said I was anti therapy for a while, because that like, I feel like people always think like therapists are going to sit there and be like, well, how do you feel about this? Or like there are ones that you don't like you have. It took me like four times to find a therapist that I liked and actually wanted to see and like feel comfortable. Like you have to find someone that fits. Yeah. If you're not not talking to somebody who makes you feel comfortable, you're not going to ever open up. Yeah. I'm my first therapist. I I didn't last very long with him. It was like six months. Nice guy. I still see him all the time. Lives in town. But it just didn't work out. Like I didn't feel I, I couldn't talk to him. And I don't know why. And the same thing goes for the kids. Like you want to find one that they feel comfortable. Like all of our kids besides Ava have done therapy yeah. and they know none of them do it now, but it was like, they looked forward to it. Like yeah. I remember my son during COVID after COVID and everything, like going back to school. I remember he said to me, he was like, mom, whatever happened to my therapist? Like, can I go back? Like can he go asked back, to yeah. go back. And I was yeah. like, I love that, that you like saw that. And he did, he went back like bi-weekly for about a year. And then the therapist was like, you know, let's do it once, like a check in here and there. And then he kind of yeah, moved away from it. Yeah. Like he didn't need it anymore, but I loved that he could, like, I feel like we did a good job at that part where they yeah. can ask. 
Well, here's here's what I was the the reason I was so reluctant in the beginning is because I was told and I was taught and that you know yeah. you keep your problems in home and you keep your problems inside, and as a man you're supposed to just take everything and swallow it and find a way to fight through it. So I had like an unhealthy feeling towards it. I was like, oh well, you know you're a weak person if you go to therapy. Now being in therapy for almost nine years or whatever you know whatever it is, I know that the it's the total opposite, like. To go to therapy, you need such strength to 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 kind of swallow your pride that you know at, at, if you don't go, you're just weak because you don't want to make yourself better. Like it's not, I don't know. Therapy to me just gave me so many tools to get through down good times, bad times. You know, like you know ups downs, everything. And 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 I I, I wouldn't be in the position that I'm in. I wouldn't. We wouldn't have the marriage that we have if it wasn't for therapy, to be honest with you. No, we've done couples therapy. And yeah. like, I feel like a lot of people, when you think couples therapy, you think like, oh, they're getting separated or they're getting divorced because they're like, they must have problems. But it's like one of those things where it's like before the problems get any bigger, let's go and like break it down, figure out how to work together. And like, honestly, couples therapy, like there's sometimes we would leave and we'd be like more mad at each other. But oh, yeah. then like we would cool off and be like, okay, like you understand where you're missing. And like, it, it helps, like it, it just helps to hear someone else's, they like help to change your views on it. But when it comes to like, and you can't force when it comes to like separation or divorce, you can't force the other parent to like better themselves, to go to therapy, to do all this stuff. Like only you can do it for yourself, for your child. And like, even my son's father, he was really reluctant when I wanted to sign my son up for therapy and well, our son up for therapy. And then he kind of came on board. And he, then once he saw the like progress he made, he, he started taking him like himself. Yeah. He, would, he was like, Oh, I'll take him. So he did come around, but like focus on yourself and just know you can only control as long as the kids aren't being like abused in any way or like nothing like that. You can only control what goes on in your household which was really hard when I met Dave because I was so used to having all the control. So with my stepsons, I'm like, wait, but if I set this rule, like how come when they go to their moms, like yeah. they, and he too was that way. So it's like, and even with my son's father, like you can only control like, Hey, say we take a toy away or say like no video games because you weren't listening. And then they go back to their other parents and it's like video games till you're blue in the face. You can't control that. So you kind of just have to let it go. As long as they're, your kid's not in harm's way, you kind of just have to be like, all right, like, is it really worth starting like World War Three over this? And it like, never is. It really isn't. No. Biting your tongue and just, I don't it For me, it, it took so long. I'm like a very spiteful, stubborn, stubborn <laughs> person. And begrudging. Yeah. Like I hold grudges. If someone's mean to me or something, I'm like, nope, we're done. I I won't be mean to you back necessarily, but I just never want to talk to you. I just want to act like you don't exist. So like I, for me, it's like learning to be like, I don't know. Yep. To like learn to accept other people. And like we're in a good place now, so I can't even say. No, you guys are you guys are good now. Yeah, I can't even say it's nothing against Dave's ex-wife or my son's father. Like it's nothing against. It's just her. Him. It's yeah. her. And I have to say, like, one of the right. biggest things for me was my son's father's girlfriend when he met. Uh, yeah, Tracy's great. His, yeah, I didn't know if we should say her name. Oh. When we, he met his girlfriend, she was so nice to me. Like, I was kind of nervous to meet her. She was so nice. And she, like, texts me every holiday. And she's just like, I don't know. I was just like, oh, my gosh. Like, she makes me want to be like that. Like, I don't know. She, I was just like, oh, like, maybe. Like, she's the bigger person. Yeah. I mean, there's, look, here's the thing. There's no competition. There's no fighting. It doesn't make anything. The thing is, you're literally working with two other people to raise children. Yeah. Or, you know, it's not it's not you and your husband. It's you, your husband and his parents. And then, you know, or, or the other kid, the kid's other parents. So like my ex-wife and her, her husband who, you know, we had a rocky start. But now we're fine. We're completely fine. Like you bust each other's balls and everything. It doesn't. Yeah. And the thing is, like, you, like, me and Dave, are, we're married. We have, like, with Ava, yeah. we argue, like, even in, it was yes. in this video or the previous one, where, like, the bedtime routine, like, we have arguments and disagreements on that, and we're still together. So imagine that, like, I feel like it's times 10 when you're not with that person. Yeah. So whether, and then you have another person, like, if you're married, like, there's more more people you have to make decisions with, and yeah. it's just hard for everyone to see eye to eye. So the biggest thing I would say is letting a lot go yeah you gotta let go like it's in the end like these stupid little battles they don't help you win the war no let, al 
let it go and focus it. on the kids. Like and, and the missing. And I think the original question was, you know, the missing of the kids and not, you know, during separation. It's tough. It's it's you have to find you have to find something to keep yourself occupied. I, you know, at that time, I think I just buried myself in the gym. Yeah, I did. I was in great shape. I looked great. <laughs> Oh, she took, okay. She took the the best years out away Shut from me. Up. Well, do a little lighthearted one. How often do you guys have date night, and what do uh, you like to do for date night? How often do we have date night? Not often enough. Not often enough. What? Maybe we were trying to we, do it. Weekly. We had it. We had it for really a decent amount of time, and then we got to the point where like we didn't want to go out to dinner anymore. It was like every week. It was like, are we going to go out to dinner again? Cause we're tired of spending a fortune. We're tired of going to the same restaurant. And you feel disgusting after like, sometimes we're like, yeah. all right, we're just going to sit here and eat. And then in the summer, I remember a lot of restaurants, we were like, we should have bought the kids here because oh, yeah. it's like nice outside. And we then we got to the point where like, we were doing activities together where we would like walk, we'd yeah. go walk, we'd go like, I don't even know what we could do. But the hard thing is, like, the kids are at home, so it's not like we could have date night and, like, come back home. Like, yeah, it was like we had to come be... Come back home and what? Well, it's like we had to <laughs> we had to be out, and, like, for a while we were just like, well, what do we do? Like, we, we tried pickleball, but pickleball, getting on a court or, like, making reservations. There is. Yeah, it is. It is intense. And then Dave also... I'm very good at it. He was aggressive at it. And like, I wanted to stop it. playing one time and he was just like, I just played a win, the game. Jane. I played a win, Jane. I was sweating. I was dying. But this goes back to the other question. I mean, it's tough. You have to like separate, pull yourself away from being a parent because it's, this is one thing I've, and, and I, unfortunately, I get on these TikTok algorithms with like, and then I send them to my wife and she doesn't even look at them. I look at them. She doesn't look at them. But like, you got to remember at the end of the day, before these kids existed, right? And in, in our situation is a little different because we're a blended family. However, but the weekends we it, that there were no kids around, it was just the two of us, we never had an issue getting along. We never had an issue going out. We had never had an issue being intimate with each other. So like, the kids are harsh. No, you just have to remember that like at the end of the day, like that you, it's you're growing these kids together, but you you have to build your relationship too. like the relationship is the most important part. You don't allow the relationship to fu suffer because you have kids. It just doesn't make sense. It defeats the whole purpose. You don't get in a relationship with someone, get married to them, fall in love with them to like create a kid and then just, Oh, well, see you later. Yeah. You lose. I think date nights are like, I think at least having a monthly date night is the most like if you can't I know it's hard when you have kids to like find a sitter and do all that so I impossible I'd, ideally I would say I mean ideally I would say bi-weekly would be great but mm -hmm. ideally if you could have a monthly date night where you could just get out of the house have a check-in and then like every three months even do like a night away or even like our my therapist that I see now suggested like us just getting a hotel to kind of because if we <laughs> if we I'm we happy. always do an anniversary trip once a year always. me and Dave and it's like we're dating again. Like once I'm out of the house, because when I'm home, you're like so consumed at everything going on in the house. Like even if the kids aren't here, I'm like, oh wait, I have to do this. It's like nice to just feel free again and like be like no responsibility. So like even just getting a hotel room. Yeah. Not <laughs> Sorry. Excuse me. I'm yawning. Yeah. Um, I'm not yawning because of what you're saying. I'm just very tired because our daughter wakes me up. Um, what did she say this morning when she woke me up? Oh, this morning, Ava had a meltdown because it wasn't her birthday. Yep. She was pissed. She came in the room and she's like, Mom. You know, it's her birthday week because that's goes, what we do in this house as we celebrate no, weeks. her birthday week's next week. No, it's this Today's week. Today's Sunday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. No, weeks start on Monday. Weeks start on Sunday. Weeks start on Monday. Weeks start on Sunday. Uh-oh. Well, we're going to have to wrap this vlog up yeah. because speaking of kids, I they hear them. Upstairs. It's going downhill they, fast. They're shit. So in the comments, I would love to hear our suggestions, what you want to see on this next podcast. These are going to be every weekly. I Every every week. We're going to post week. one weekly. Post one weekly on Sundays. Sundays, on Sundays. Sundays are going to be the day. All right. Start of the week. Start of the week. Start of the week, Jane. Yeah.